Welcome back to another story from the Family Records. Before we get going on today's story, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. We pull new records out of the collection every week, and don't forget to ring the bell so you never miss us drop a needle on any of our videos. Also, if you like the video or want to leave a comment, hey, we love when you do both those things, so feel free. Today's artist is known by two names, legally changing his in 2001 to Sananda Matreya. He was a Golden Gloves winning boxer in the state of Florida in 1980 before joining the army. But in 1983, he was dishonorably discharged for being absent without leave. Let's drop the needle on. Introducing the hard line, according to Terence Trent Darby. After he got kicked out of the army, Terence stayed in West Germany where he had been deployed. During his time there, he was the frontman in a band called The Touch. They released an album in 1984 called Love on Time. And after this, he moved to London, where he would briefly play with the Bojangles and where he would meet musician and producer Martin Ware. Ware helped to develop Darby's sound and style over the next year. And in 86, he would sign a recording contract with CBS Records. Relocating again, this time to Amsterdam, he wrote and recorded the songs on today's album. And in 1987, he released his debut, introducing the hard line according to Terence Trent Darby. Co-produced by Martin Ware, Darby writes all the songs himself, minus one, the final track on the album, which is a cover of Smokey Robinson. So William Robinson is credited. That William Robinson track is Who's Loving You. It's a song that's been covered several times by artists like Khalees, Michael Bublé, and the Jackson Five. Speaking of Michael Jackson, when this debut released, the reaction to it led to some favorable comparisons to artists like Prince and Michael. Darby rejected these comparisons, saying that he was a unique artist with his own style. But I have to say, when I first started the record, I immediately thought of MJ. There are certain flares in both Terrence's singing and his voice that made me stop and think, was Michael Jackson already out at this time? Yes, he was. So anyways, we got a little off track, but Darby released his debut in 1987. And for a first outing, you couldn't ask for a much better response. It went number one in the UK on its release, and it would also top the charts in Australia and Switzerland, and go to number four in the United States. The album was a hit in a variety of markets, and this strong international support helped it sell over a million copies worldwide in its first three days of release. It sold over a million units in the US and over one and a half million in the UK. It sold a lot, going platinum 19 times around the world. And Darby certainly seemed aware of the impact his debut was having, saying in an interview at the time that it was the most important album since the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper. After those comments leaked to US media outlets, he stated that most of what he said was exaggerated, but that it is sometimes necessary to hit people over the head to get their attention. If he was looking for attention, Terrence certainly garnered that with the singles from the album. The first single, If You Let Me Stay, did well. It charted at 17 in the UK, but only 68 in the US. But it was the second single, Wishing Well, that broke through, reaching number one on both charts and establishing Darby as a major new talent in the music industry. The album won a Grammy Award for Best R&B Vocal Performance Male in 1989, among several other awards and nominations. Like I said, you couldn't ask for a much better response. Okay, here we go with my final goodbyes. And here they are, my final thoughts. So first of all, um, kind of a weird day, and it's a little later. Uh, okay, first of all, actually, I want to apologize because I know that Terrence changed his name, but I also knew that I would fuck it up if I tried to do that one the whole time. So I apologize. I know you did change your name, but uh, yeah, I saw a review of this talking about it being like 80s banker music. And um, I agree, but at the same time, I would say as yet untitled is my favorite track on here. And that is very different from that type of aesthetic. It's the spoken word song right before uh, the end of the album. But like I was saying, it's a little bit later today. I'm recording a little bit later, so I don't know how the light's gonna be. Um, we'll see, that should be interesting. But 
uh, yeah, just sort of had a bunch of stuff come up this morning and uh, just had to deal with some things. So didn't get around to writing until a bit later. Um, but yeah, having said that, you know, the writing for this one was okay. There wasn't a ton there and the album was super successful. So it's good. It just, there's not a ton of body. I think this is going to be a shorter episode. But um, speaking of shorts, we started the new shorts with the last episode. And I think those went pretty well, both in terms of my timeline for making the videos. So it worked within that. And also in terms of I was able to do them. They were good. They were three good singles there on that album. That was the Greatest Hits album. So it kind of stood to reason that there probably would be. Oh, sorry, Walter just made a sound on the wall and I, it scared me. Um, so yeah, there was reason I think that there would be three good singles. On this album, I ended up only getting two. I thought I might get three. I only ended up with two. Uh, the first single, there was just nothing there for it really. So that was unfortunate because it's a good song. And there's a few good songs on this album. Uh, like I said, I really do like As Yet Untitled and then that, the transition from that into the Smokey Robinson song, Who's Loving You Now, um, right? Or just Who's Loving You? Yeah, Who's Loving You, right? There's no now. Who's Loving You? But yeah, those are, that's great. And then Wishing Well is really good. It's just really like catchy. Like there's a, the, there's like a whistle part kind of on it. Um, very catchy. And I see why this album was so popular. But uh, man, he sounds like Michael Jackson. Uh, sorry. Um, sorry. But I think he does. Uh, <laughs> I think he does. There's a bunch of parts on this that sound like very Michael-esque. And for sure, like Jackson was in his prime 80s. So, you know, like Thriller and shit had already come out before this album. So like the dude is well known. There's no question. So, uh, yeah, it's super interesting. I mean, obviously, I think, well, obviously, I, th I think it's tough for me to know, but I think, I think there's obviously Jackson influence on this album. And uh, then when the album's a hit and you, you want to distance yourself somewhat from that and make your own lane, because I, I'm sure there is some fear of kind of getting lost in the mix when you're in the, in the company of Prince and, and Michael. So I do understand it in a sense in terms of why he would push back on that. But at the same time, um, I mean, I think it's a compliment. He sounds great. And, and the album is great. His voice is really good. The songwriting is strong. The production is really strong. Um, that Martin dude, it's like Martin with a Y, okay, not an I. It's Martin with a Martin where, where it's just normal, with a with a Y. But um, yeah, it sounds like he was a pretty big producer musician there, working with a bunch of big acts, uh, including Tina Turner, like a revival for her. And yeah, I feel like he definitely had um, a hand, to, a big hand to play on this album uh, on the production side. Uh, even though um, I saw that. Uh, Terrence basically played pretty much all, not on the credits of the album, but from what I was able to look up, Terrence played most of the instruments. So I'm assuming when he was composing the music and then when they got in the studio, they had the little band there and that's why the, the credits have that. But um, yeah, obviously a very talented musician, songwriter, and he has made tons more albums since then. I mean, I think he has like four or five more as, as Darby and then he changes his name in 01. And then I think he's done like, some like 13 more albums since 2001, like nine studio albums and four live albums or something. So dude stays making music. Um, but spoilers, uh, I don't think anything has really topped this album, like in terms of the commercial success that it had. And obviously as a debut also, that's incredible to sell a million records in three days for your debut album. Unreal, surreal. Uh, super crazy. So that's a really hard thing to live up to also. So I mean, if you sold a million albums in four days, that's still not as good as your debut. So yeah, um, it's all relative. But uh, yeah, he's great. It's a great album. Um, you know, I was definitely nervous about it just when I looked it up. There's literally nothing there on, 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 on the internet about it. So I had to go digging a little bit, but um, strong, good album. Uh, some good songs on there. And so we're going to end up with four videos from this one. We're going to have this full review. 
the music short tomorrow at eight, and then I'll drop the first song single tomorrow at six, and then the next one. Uh, so yeah, so it'll be the videos out Friday evening. You've had a song single in the morning. Friday evening, the song's out. Saturday, two pieces of content: the music and the 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 first single. And then Sunday, I'll pop the second single. Maybe I'll save it till Monday. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm trying to make sure that I have at least. Yeah, I'll probably do it Sunday because that way I have one video Sunday and then one video Monday also. Um, that's my goal, I think. With more content now, it's like yeah, give you guys at least one video per day, maybe a couple depending on the day. So like um, yesterday, it's the two because you have the the album short and then you have the singles. Anyway. I'm rambling a little bit, but let me know what you think of the singles. Um, let me know how I can make those better. I think that's a great format, so I'm gonna do that more, and I'm gonna try to go back and revisit some of the albums that we've done, and then like I alluded to also, like do some other albums, like albums that like aren't in the collection necessarily, but that have great songs on them that I think will be popular, uh, and popular in terms of people will be interested in knowing about that stuff. So let me know, leave me comments about songs that you would want a song single of if I was just looking at other stuff. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think about that format and what you think about everything. Um, just how I can make this better for you guys. Uh, I appreciate you guys so much. And definitely that's a big goal of this is just to make sure that we're producing content that you guys want to watch. Um, and yeah, I think that, uh, the Lennon videos have been doing good, but it's also John Lennon. So it's hard to judge, right? It's always so hard with the random records. Like I just, to get a temperature, um, and also to get an idea of like how exciting a video is going to be. So like when I pulled this album, I was like, oh my God, like who is this person? This is super obscure, but this album's huge. So I may be totally wrong on that. And that is what I've really been enjoying about making a lot of this content is just completely throwing out my expectations of what an audience wants. Um, because it's just my expectations ultimately. So anyway. I love you guys. Thanks so much. Thanks for hanging around till the end. I appreciate you. I'm interested to see your darker got. Um, take care.